Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. The inside story of Prince Harry and Meghan's great escape from royal life, as told by two comic creators. Marry the prince, move into a palace. From the outside, Meghan Markle's life sounded like a fairy tale. That's why Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan of Sussex shocked their family, their country, and the whole world in January with their surprise announcement that they would step back from life as members of the royal family. Their decision led to months of speculation, gossip, and leaks that continue to this day. To help the world understand precisely what happened, Anthony Del Cole and Josh Adams, two accomplished comics creators to tell this royal tale, the resulting comic is an illustrated look at how old scars can still feel fresh. The fraught relationships within the royal family and their relation to the press. And why one of the world's most famous royals would relinquish his title of prince. We're proud to present the great escape. Once upon a time, there was a prince. Even though his family had tried everything, they could to give his as regular a life as possible. Everyone in the entire world knew who he was. One morning he woke up at his family's summer home in Scotland. And he could tell something was wrong. The entire house was quiet. All radios and televisions has been removed. His older brother, also a prince, could tell that something was happening. And then the boy's father, also a prince, came to greet his two sons and told them some bad news. Bad news about their mother, a woman whose life had also been a fairy tale. She found a charming prince and became beloved by the entire world. She became the most popular royal in history and was dubbed the people's prince. She was followed everything she went. So she used that to her advantage. Walked cameras to areas of the world that were often ignored. Walked through fields full of landmines. But not every fairy tale has a happy ending. When the boy's boy mother and father split up, the attention on her became unbearable. She was forced to sue some photographers and newspapers for invasion of privacy. She couldn't go anywhere without being photographed. And her son, the young prince, watched it all. Watched how the media turned her life into a living hell. That prince's father that morning was forced to tell his sons that his mother had died. Involved in a car accident, blamed at the time on paparazzi. That young prince would remember that day, August 31st, 1997, and that moment for the rest of his life. Even as he got older, the death of Princess Diana had a huge impact on her son, Prince Harry. He blamed the paparazzi for what happened to her. It was a major reason why he hated being a member of the royal family. So like all teenagers, he rebelled. Tabloids were quick to find photos of him, drinking underage, smoking, naked romps in Las Vegas, and even wearing a Nazi uniform to a costume party. And then, Harry began serving in the military. Found a feeling of peace for the first time since he was a boy. He enjoyed being called officers to deck Wales, instead of Prince Harry. It's very easy to forget who I'm when I'm in the army. Everyone's wearing the same kind of thing. In 2007, he was slated to go to the front battle zone in Iraq. He was excited to do his part. But then the media found out about the deployment. Turned it into a national media story. Harry's deployment was debated by the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. It also led to insurgent groups in Iraq threatening Harry's life if he came over. So the head of the British Army decided to keep Harry home, away from overseas service. 
Afghanistan, late 2007. It was another event that frustrated him, made him wonder if he had any control over his own life. He did eventually see action later that year, when he served in front lines in Afghanistan. He enjoyed serving his country. The mission was top secret and only revealed when the media. In this case, the German publication Bild broke an agreement and made it public. In September 2012, he began return to the Afghanistan front lines. This time as an Apache helicopter co-pilot and gunner. Again, threats were made against him. A Taliban spokesman declared, We are using all our strength to get rid of him, either by killing or kidnapping. We have informed our commanders in Helmand to do whatever they can to eliminate him. Harry admitted that he probably killed some insurgents, but most of his missions were to support ground troops and rescue NATO and Afghanistan personnel. He told the media he loved it because you can only fit a certain amount of people in a helicopter, therefore no one can follow us like you guys. He said that he had three nets, one in the army, one socially in my own private time, and then one with the family and stuff like that. So there is a switch, and I flick it when necessary. While serving, he developed interest in supporting injured veterans. It led him to beginning the Invictus Games, a Paralympic-style sporting event for servicemen and women, that began in 2014. It became a big passion in his life. But he was eventually forced to return to his duties as Prince. He found the constant media attention hard. He had depression and came close to breaking down. But in July 2016, he was set up on a blind date with an actress, Meghan Markle, reportedly at London's private Soho house. Meghan didn't know anything about the prince other than he was nice. Meghan was different from the other girls he had met. She had never been afraid of the spotlight. At age 11, when she saw an ivory soap commercial that made it look like only women should do household chores, she started a letter writing campaign. She got Procter and Gamble to change the slogan. Though her parents had divorced when she was young, she was close to both of them. She had also achieved success as a cast member of the show Suits, doing charity work as well as a fashion influencer. So she and Harry found a great deal in common. As their first date wore on, they asked themselves, well, what are we doing tomorrow? We should meet again. After two days, Harry invited Meghan to travel with him to Botswana. Harry had fallen in love with the country when he, his father and William had visited it shortly after Princess Diana's death. Harry tried to come back every year. He refers to the citizens there as the most down-to-earth people I know on the planet. They enjoyed the silence and the peace of the place. But they both knew it wouldn't last forever. It didn't take long for rumors to spread of their dating. By early October, the infamous London tabloids were reporting of the romance. And along with those reports came harsh opinion pieces, some outright mean and racist. Some rich and exotic DNA. Miss Markle's mother is a dreadlocked African-American lady from the wrong side of the tracks. And even in Toronto, where Meghan was filming suits, she was followed by paparazzi. On November 8, Prince Harry issued an unprecedented public attainment, confirming the romance, but also castigating some. The past week has seen a line crossed. His girlfriend, Meghan Markle has been subject to wave of abuse and harassment. Some of this has been very public, the smear on the front page of a national newspaper, the racial undertones of comment pieces. 
and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls and web articlet comment. Some of it has been hidden from the public. The nightly legal battles to keep defamatory stories out of papers. Her mother having to struggle past photographers in order to get to her front door. The attempts of reporters and photographers to gain illegal entry to her home and the calls to police that followed. The substantial bribes offered by papers to her ex-boyfriend. Prince Harry is worried about Miss Markle's safety and is deeply disappointed that he has not been able to protect her. It is not right that a few months into a relationship with him that Miss Markle should be subjected to such a storm. He knows commentators will say this is the price she has to pay and that this is all part of the game. He strongly disagrees. This is not a game. It is her life and his. In November 2017, after a year of traveling back and forth between London and Canada, they decided to take the next step. Harry proposed in a quiet moment between the two as they were roasting a chicken. On November 27, 2017, after they announced the engagement, Meghan immediately started receiving positive coverage from the media. There were a great deal of articles about how close Meghan had gotten to Kate Middleton. The Queen also broke with tradition and invited her to spend time with the family. Unmarried partners had never been invited to Christmas before, including Kate Middleton. It all really did seem like it was a fairy tale. But then the media became quite interested in Thomas Markle, Meghan's father. And he became interested in how he was being portrayed by the media. Thomas arranged a monetary deal with tabloids to stage photo ops. He claimed it was because he didn't like the initial unflattering photos of him that were snapped. They included shots of him reading about the wedding on a public computer or perusing tourist books about England. When the royals asked if he had receded payment from the tabloids, he lied, he denied it. On May 19, 2018, coverage of Will He or Won't He Attend? overshadowed the wedding itself. At the end, he didn't attend under advisement from his doctor. But many in the media said it was because he wasn't welcomed by the royal family. Meghan walked herself halfway down the aisle, and then Prince Charles escorted her the rest of the way. Even after the wedding, Thomas continued to make waves, accepting offers to appear on British media. In June 2018, he appeared on Good Morning, Britain and claimed Harry had spoken to him about Brexit, Trump and other political issues. Something the royals do not abide by. And in July 2918, he chatted with the Daily Mail, claiming he was persona non grata to his daughter. So like the little girl starting a letter writing campaign. Megan again picked up a pen was time to urge her father to stop. It was the last communication they had. Harry was again reminded of how the media had treated his family over the years. In 1993, Princess Diana sued the Daily Mirror after it published photos of her at a gym taken by a hidden camera. In 2005, Prince Charles sued the Mail after they published extracts from his diary, purchased from a disgruntled former employee. In 2012, William and Kate Middleton sued Closer magazine after they took photos of Kate sunbathing topless at a private chateau in France. Even as children, Harry and William were cautious of what they would say. They would play a game and leak false stories to their friends to see which ones would get out. Allow them to figure out who to trust. Initially, all of the attention helped bring Megan closer to her new family, others who understood what she was going through. She and Harry, along with Prince William and Kate Middleton, 
were dubbed the Fab Four by the media. But the media quickly turned against her again. Critical of everything she did. Like holding her baby bump repeatedly while in public. Even though the media had previously praised Kate Middleton for doing the exact same thing. Experts chalked this up to inherent racism in the British media. As Kristen Monzer, a royal commentator, said, I don't think Meghan would be facing any of these double standards if she were white. Tradition had it that first appearances of new royal babies would be outside the hospital. Prince Charles and Diana had done it. Prince William and Kate had. But Harry and Meghan decided to introduce their new baby boy, Archie, two days later at Windsor Castle, and were very secretive about the detail of the birth. And the British media again attacked them for it. And soon the media began to speculate that the Fab Four were splitting up. In June 2019, Harry and Meghan announced they would be leaving William and Kate's Royal Foundation charity and start their own. In January 2019, Splash News, a paparazzi agency, used a helicopter to take intimate pictures of Harry and Meghan's Cotswold home. They were forced to move out. Harry and Meghan were then criticized for taking private jets three times in September 2019. They said it was to provide them necessary security and that they would offset the carbon emissions. In October 2019, they filed a lawsuit against the Mail on Sunday for publishing the private letter Meghan had sent her father Thomas Markle three months after their wedding. The lawsuit suggested the Mail on Sunday strategically omitted select paragraphs. Harry and Meghan funded this lawsuit with their own private funds and said any rewards would go to charity. Thomas Markle said he would be happy to be called as a witness to defend the mail on Sunday. With so many reports, the only public statement Harry and Meghan would make was in the ITV documentary Harry and Meghan, An African Journey. Harry confirmed he and his brother weren't as close as they had once been. We're certainly on different paths at the moment, but I will always be there for him, and I know he will always be there for me. We don't see each other as much as we used to, because we are so busy, but I love him dearly. And also talked about the constant media attention. There's a lot of stuff that hurts, especially when the majority of it is untrue, I will not be bullied into playing a game that killed my mom. Megan, meanwhile, confessed to the unhappiness the media had caused her and how difficult life had become. It's not enough to just survive something, right? That's not the point of life. You've got to thrive. You've got to feel happy. On the heels of this, Harry and Megan elected to spend Christmas by themselves spending six weeks in a mansion in British Columbia, Canada. Despite having the support of Her Majesty the Queen, they still were criticized by the media. On November 14, 2019, Piers Morgan wrote for the Daily Mail, If Harry and Meghan don't want negative press, they should stop behaving like whiny spoiled brats and do their damn duty, and they can start by spending Christmas with the Queen. But by being in Canada, Harry and Meghan found a whole new sort of peace. And it was then that they made a decision under score to pursue a move they had talked about for a while. We intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent, while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the Queen. Though there had been rumors, no one was expecting the unprecedented an announcement from Harry and Meghan.
It became the most popular news item around the world, even eclipsing Brexit from the front pages. The media immediately started referring to it as Megxit. People started selling merchandise with the term. But little did the media know that the term actually derived from racist roots. Meghan and Harry leave royals for commoner life. They had compared Meghan to Yoko Ono, a parasite, and have been cool heads prev extreme and malicious. On January 13, 2020, May meeting was set to discuss Harry and Meghan's future in the monarchy. Meghan was in Canada with Archie and was unable to attend. She was going to Skype in, but it was decided she shouldn't. Harry would have to decide their future for both of them. He would discuss the separation with Queen Elizabeth, Prince Charles and Prince William, and their advisors. It was a quick meeting. Despite being disappointed, Queen Elizabeth wanted to help and support her grandson. She was there to protect Harry and William when their mother died, and I she wanted to do the same this time. Prince William urged Harry to change his mind, but Harry was determined to make it happen. After the meeting, an announcement was made by the Queen. My family and I are entirely supportive of Harry and Meghan's desire to create a new life as a young family. Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family, we respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family while remaining a valued part of my family. On January 18, 2020, Harry delivered a speech at a dinner in London for his charity Centibail. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. September 6, 1997 over 2 billion people worldwide watched the funeral of Princess Diana and the young prince who had just lost his mother. My mother had just died and I had to walk a long way behind her coffin, surrounded by thousands of people watching me while millions more did on television. I don't think any child should be asked to do that under any circumstances. I don't think it would happen today. It was one of the hardest things I have ever done. I think being part of this family, in this role, in this job, every single time I see a camera, every single time I hear a click, every single time I see a flash, it takes me straight. So in that respect, it's the worst reminder of her life, as opposed to the best. The future for Harry and Meghan is unclear. The separation has commenced, and they have relocated to California. The question on the minds of many people following them is, will they finally be able to find the happily ever after they really want? Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.